I just managed to get one of these locking nuts off. Don't have a key for it, so I had to find a solution. I'll show you what I did. Put nut in the way there, I'll leave that for a sec. So, here's the thing I purchased. It's a little uh, locking nut remover. It's got a thread inside it there. Now this one's a 13 16 I think I could have done with a metric one because it doesn't quite it's just ever so slightly. So it's got a, a thinner edge here too which I couldn't use a normal socket like a 12 point socket to bash that on because there's not enough room in between the wheel nut and this wheel edge here. But this one, just thin enough, might take a little bit of paint off but it's not damaging the wheel. But it's also not quite big enough for this nut. But I did manage to get it on there. And the way you do that is hammer it on. It's just gripped on there now. So put the impact driver on uh, on a medium setting. I don't want all the ugga duggers. Um, I don't know if it, it won't be on enough yet, but I'll give it a go. And you put it on reverse. Ooh. So she's going on. It is biting the thread onto the, around that locking nut. Might put him up to three. Yep, so starting to turn it now. Yeah, they're a bugger, but we got it. That's number two, two of four. Now I've got to get that out of there, which I'll do in the vise. So now you put your your driver on forward on forward motion like clockwise. Spin it off. No. <laughs> we didn't actually get a shot of getting it out, but oh hold it up like you were. <laughs> Wilson just lifted the exhaust out <laughs> from under the car. Twin exhaust. There you go, you you're a speed demon, you got extra horsepower now. You should be able to run faster. <laughs> oh, poor old Betty White, she's coming apart. Slowly but surely getting the pieces out. Hurricane. 64 millimeters. Nobody talks about exhaust in millimeters, so that's a two and a half inch system all the way through. Just undid this cowling, so we're about to have a look underneath it. Not bad. It's a lot of debris in there, so I wonder what that plenum panel looks like under that. But um, oh, look, stack of mud. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Good. Good grief. It's just. Just mud, yeah, dirt, but look under it. Under it, it's just paint. It's just paint. It's good paint. Uh, we'll get the vacuum in there, I suppose, and suck all those leaves out. On there. Yeah. Mulch. 
put it in the garden. looking um, in on this plenum panel inside under the cowl there and it's just so full of uh, rotting leaf matter that it's actually dirt and it's a wonder it's not rusted through so I'm gonna have to get out as much as I can by hand and um, I'm gonna have to get that out by hand and then probably take the car outside on a sunny day and put the pressure washer through it because I'm not pulling it apart as if it's not it's hard to believe it wouldn't be rusty but uh, it doesn't look too bad feels all right under the dirt crazily there's one little bit of rust over here I saw where is it there but that's not much I just got that little cover off. I had to grind the Phillips head screws. They were just not going to budge. But yeah, it looks a bit gnarly under there, but we'll give it a wire wheel and see how it looks. It looked a little bit, a bit of pitting rust, but overall not too bad. That's the cover plate underneath. Top had to grind the screws off. Lawson's getting the old seam sealer out of there. Clean that one up too, and fill it back up with some Sikaflex. passenger side guard down here and I've just decided I would make an attempt at fixing this rust however I never actually welded in rust like patch patched up welded in rust repairs I did rust repairs <laughs> when I was a young fella but I would just grind out the rust, cover it with a piece of, you know, galvanized steel plate, pop rivet it on, grind the rivets back a little bit and smear over it with bog, and then go and get the car pass for Rego. And that was about the extent of my rust repairs back in the day. So, um, here we go, and actually using the welder. I actually bought this welder about a year ago, so it, it's been sitting in the shed collecting dust, as you can see. But it's um, brand new. I haven't I've barely welded anything with it. And went to YouTube University this morning to figure out how to weld really thin sheet metal. So it's a Unimig Viper 165. Seems pretty good. It's running a bit of combination argon gas. And this is my attempt this morning at practice. First of all, blowing big holes, dialed it in a bit better, and you know, we, some of these are I've practiced there and there at different times, so it's not progressively getting better, but it's, it is better. And I think it's to a point now where I've got some nice little 
world beads there that will do the job. And I've practiced grinding it off to see what it look like. Alright, I'm going to steal a little piece of panel out of Betty White. Uh, how was that that way? So, see I've just marked out a patch panel. Let's cut him out. One of the reasons I chose this back section was because it was already lined on the back with the tarry stuff. Might burn a bit when I weld, but I'll just clean up the edges and uh, should be good. Got that pretty much fitting in there, a bit hard to do one handed, but. Um, it's still a little bit rusty up in that top section, but I don't want to have to cut all this part out, so I'm just going to live with that. It's only the inner guard, the inside, and uh, we'll fix up the outside. You won't see that. Yep, I'm good at making mess. That, yep, this is very messy. My first attempt at a patch panel welded style. Um, all this extra blobbage, you know, making excuses, but that's me chasing holes, especially along the bottom here, because this was a little bit thin, not quite, wasn't rusted through, but it was thinner than this was, so it was a bit hard, so I was chasing holes, but I think I got them, I'll grind it off and see, started getting better at it, up this side, bits and pieces, some, some are good, <laughs> Anyway, practice makes perfect. I tell you what, if you've never done it before, folks, just give it a go. Because um, it's hard, but I think it's worth it. Still got a couple of little holes down here that need to um, fill. It's the pinhole, bigger hole, pinhole, pinhole. Awesome. Yeah. What's happening? Taking the engine out. Taking the engine out. Just getting the carby off. Cool. Good morning folks. Welcome back to Smoother's Backyard. We're at Betty White again and we've really got to get this thing out of the driveway so we've got to get every single piece off it that we actually want before we get a truck to come and take the, uh, the rest of it away. So today, we might do a few other things or have a few other bits and pieces in this video, but primarily we're going to take the 351 and the FMX gearbox out of Betty White in one piece, hopefully. No, you need to, and you're only going to, if you're going to keep kinking it. That's it. It's got a hose clamp on it. Kind of fit. Yep. Uh, you hold the bonnet. Oh. Like yeah. Oh,
just getting the heater hoses off. I think we really have to get these extractors off because they're not going to fit through here, I don't think. That's the way they flare out. So that's the un unenviable task of undoing all the header bolts, which all face downwards. Great. Taken off the power steering pump. So we're making progress, slowly but surely. We've got all the specialized equipment that you might need, like lumber wood, and of course, um, all the safety gear. I don't know if you can see that there, but those jack stands, they're approved. So Lawson's just wedged that bit of wood in there to hold that those headers up so I can get the last bolt out and then that one should be free. Not the funnest job in the world. This side's not been too bad because it's a fair bit of clearance. That's all the bolts undone. Let's see if we can get it out. You might have to help me by lifting it a bit, Lawson, at the front. Yep. Maker, nice. Might need a new gasket. New gaskets in order, Woody. That stick. Just grab that header removal tool again. Transmission cross member. Does it need lifting or something? Front. It's tight. Might have to drop this gearbox a little bit. I'm just going to lift the transmission up a little bit. Hopefully, that'll give us a bit more room to get that right side. No, it seems to have jammed it in there, or more so. Ah, uh, these ones not much room, eh? I don't know how you get them in there when the engine's in. Turn it that 
way it gets caught on that um, steering box. flashing like it's gone flat all right so you probably didn't hear that clunk but you saw the engine <laughs> jolt out of the position but we basically just didn't detach any of the wires we just took the whole wiring loom piled it on top of the engine so it's detached from that because we're going to use some of it or we don't know what we want but we'll take it all out as one I'm just seeing if there's anything else back here that's going to be attached and I don't think so but who knows, lift a bit further and see. We're on a slope, which is never fun. So the engine's trying to push over to the side of the car. Okay, we're up against the up against the uh, radio support panel a bit. Bacon. Transmission where it's up near the pump. So while we're talking, we're doing that. We're talking yeah, well, you're talking to me. Yeah, both. So, um, just looking at the top of the automatic transmission, you can just see the heat that's radiated through to it there. So, hopefully, it's still okay. So, it's had obviously had radiant heat upon it, but um, we'll get it checked out. Ah, well we haven't done a lot of filming because we've just been busy trying to get it sorted, you know. It's always hard to think of everything at once when it comes to filming, but um, as you can see we've got the engine up and halfway out. Uh, everything's gone flat. Battery's on the microphones, that's not working now, so I'm back on the camera microphone and the... Um, Camera battery went flat, but luckily I bought a spare one of those, so now we're back up and running with that. Uh, yeah, it's just been, you know, it's what it is. Took a long time to try and figure out how to get that driver's side header out, and we couldn't get it out, so in the end we just left it flopped, laying there until we pulled the engine up, and then we could get it out. So I don't know how they get them in there. Maybe if you've got a hoist, you can put it up. In a vertical position and then tilt it but we couldn't get it out only half a meter off the ground so uh, we'll carry on and see if we can pull this engine and gearbox out now it is nearly dark though so don't know if we're going to get that done yet
Pacific. Yes, it's not ideal conditions for pulling out engines here yeah, because we're on a we're in a downhill slope here. So it's a bit of a bugger. But nevertheless, we're out. Yeah, I was saying before, yeah, the heat from inside that fire in the cabin of the car where the hump is has really radiated through. So hopefully that gearbox is okay, but we will get it checked out and tested. And, uh, we've got two C4s as well, but all of them will need some sort of rebuild. That one's an FMX. Apparently, but, um, yeah, you see up where the firewall was. It's it's, a, it's charred, but I don't think there's any damage to the actual engine. It's just you know cosmetic, really. to make a hell of a mess. Automatic transmission fluid everywhere. So I didn't have the speedo cable hole plugged off but oh well. Um, yeah it's in the garage. We've got our other son, my other son, my other son, Lawson's brother Denim to come and help and um, manhandle it <laughs> into the garage. Had to get it up all these little steps and that little drain over there these terrible wheels didn't film it but you can understand it was a nightmare anyway <laughs> but we did it and yeah there's you know claret everywhere i've got to go and get something to put under that still dripping at the back but yeah, here we are crusty's there there's just a, like a mess in here like a bomb's gone off but we've got the the nine inch over there still got betty white's front end there which will get that out and clean it up and sell it and all the grill and lights and everything, but yeah, nine inch transmission engine out. Wheels are off. 
we've been getting plenty of views which is great so um, thanks to everyone that's um, subscribed and pressed like and all that sort of stuff and you've been enjoying the the crusty videos and some people even enjoy the other videos <laughs> and I do random stuff so um, thanks for watching Smoother's Backyard and we'll see you next time.